Hi, I'm here today to tell you about Open Life Science, a program to help early career researchers become open science leaders and ambassadors. First of all, this talk will be given by three people, Berenice Batu on the left. Hi, I'm Berenice Batu. I'm currently postdoc at the Freiburg University. Yo Yehudi, that's me, on the middle. Hi everyone, my name's Yo. I work at the University of Cambridge and I'm about to move to the Wellcome Trust. And Mavika Sharan on the right. Hi everyone, I'm Mavika Sharan. I am currently at the Alan Turing Institute in London. We've all been involved in various aspects of open life science, communities and open science in general for years. So, we believe that science can only advance when every researcher shares their work with others. This allows us to build on the shoulders of one another and to collaborate rather than compete. We also believe that openness shouldn't be a thoughtless default, but something that is consciously designed into what you're doing, carefully thinking about the ethics and implications at every step. Taking a look at the tech world, a 2012 study of 160 tech companies found that the level of strategic openness, and not just openness alone, correlates with effective market performance. Since this is a bit of a tech business specific point, let's also look at the open science guidelines from Open Air, where they assert that culture change requires leadership, vision and strategy. Much like in our previous slide with the strategic openness, the point two here asserts that we require targeted measures in order to bring culture change about. We also need transparency, accountability, and trust and confidence in a shared vision. So we need to coordinate and agree what that vision is. One problem in academia is that we aren't taught the so-called soft skills, skills that are imperative to effectively leading projects. There are also skills that can effectively be reused in a large number of ways. So what Open Life Science as a program does is it helps people who are interested in open science to become open science ambassadors, embedding open science values in their own projects, but also also helping give them the tools to spread this culture to others. There are lots of open science behaviours and communities out there. The process of thinking about your data and where it is stored and sharing that data if it's safe for others to analyse and reuse is open data. If you write software or even a few lines of code and you share it for reuse, that's open source software. Hardware designs and instructions with easily accessible materials can be shared as open hardware. When you end up with results from your research, you might pre-print your early results, review a paper openly, or publish your final paper in an open access journal. And if you want to help train others and you do so openly, then you're doing open education. Collaborating openly with the public to perform research is known as citizen science. And if you welcome contributors and maintainers, you're building a community. So in open life science, we explore these concepts and then we apply them to our work one step at a time. Open life science participants, who we call project leaders, learn to lead their projects openly, share their work effectively and bring about positive culture change in their communities. Let's now talk about the Open Life Science Show. Project leads, also known as mentees, participate in the program and we also have mentors and experts, people who are open science practitioners and can offer expert help and guidance. We will tell the story of two personas. Joy, the OLS protected, and Sam, their mentor. So in this example, Joy is a scientist who wants to become an open science practitioner. They have a project in mind, and they join OLS, receiving mentoring and training, gaining open leadership skills, and applying these skills and so on on their project. This builds confidence and allows them to embed open science in all aspects of their work, not just the original project ID they brought to OLS. Project leads like Joy participate in two types of course. Court group training course that introduce open science topics with guest speaker and expert and one-on-one -on -one mentorship discussion with their mentors about how these concepts are being applied to Joy's project. Let's move now to Sam. Sam is an open science practitioner. They understand the gaps others may have in open science. They join OLS as mentor to guide mentees like Joy with their project. They also share their knowledge with participants by giving talks during court course and help other projects with their course consulting as expert. They receive mentoring support and build meaningful connections with, within OLS. Mentors like Sam work closely with their mentees throughout the court and provide them guidance given their objective. 
They can also ask the help of other experts in some aspect they are not familiar with. Experts may also give talks during cohort calls. To summarize, a cohort of OLS is a 16-week-long program which alternates between one-on-one mentorship calls and cohort-based training calls. At the end of each call, assignments are given to the participant to apply the upper leadership skill to their project. We will now go through the different cohort calls to illustrate the different skills learned during the program. The program starts with a welcoming call in which participants introduce their project and we reflect on the current and desired community interaction. We discuss about our definition of open leadership, the open cadres, the difference between open by default, open by design, and common value exchange between community members in open science. The second call, we discuss how to get people to contribute to your project by remembering that contributors are people with their own views and own history. So we need to, to take that into consideration when we are trying to build a welcoming space for contribution. So we can use tools tool like project vision, roadmap, kind of contribution guidelines. In the third call, it's the first one on open science. We discuss there mostly on project development aspect, but also open soft, source software, open hardware, open data. The second call about open science is focused on sharing science. We talk about the traditional publication method, including also open access and preprint. We also discuss a less traditional method, including training, citizen science, blogging. But to design an inclusive community and not poor contributors, involve giving space for diverse voice and diverse perspective and design against information abuse. In these calls, we discuss about implicit bias and how to create persona and pathway for interaction and contribution in, in project. But sustaining um, community in, involves that project leaders and contributors save some of their energy. So in these calls, we introduce the concept of personal ecology, mental health care, and how to be an ally. We also organize a Q&A session with professionals from different scientific career paths to guide participants through their career. In the second to last call, participants prepare to conclude with a rehearsal of their final presentation. It's also the occasion to discuss how to give and receive feedback and exchange ideas. So in the last call, the project leads share their project status and outcome with other participants, and we celebrate the success, but also reflect and learn from failure. The first call of OLS was run from January to May this year, with 20 projects and 29 project leads. 17 projects graduated during one of the fourth final cohort calls. All the presentation can be watched on YouTube. And you can check also Twitter from, from some nice feedback from the Montes. Let's now meet some of our real-life Joy and Sam in OLS 1. For the first pair, the months were Samuel, a PhD student in psychology, and Amy, a master's student in anthropology. They lead the Open Science U Montreal, a student initiative to establish an inclusive and collaborative community where students and researchers at all stages of their career feel welcome to learn, share, and discuss open science values, principles, and practices. They were mentored by Andrew, a fellow of SSI and a senior lecturer. For the second pair, I want to meet you, uh, Lena and Patricia. Lena was mentored by Patricia on a project to create a network of data champions at the Library of Free University of Amsterdam. They managed to meet in person once before the COVID and participate to several events together. For the third example, I want to point out this nice project. The, project, the Bioinformatics Hub of Kenya was it's a project led by Festus, Margaret, David and Michael and Motor by Toby. During the core, they managed to launch a successful network of bioinformaticians in Kenya and organize several online events. Highlights of impacts made within this program. Lillian Chuma, who's a researcher in water policy, established an information center for open science called Open Connect Kenya. Kiara a program manager, assessed ways to infuse open culture in Zuckerman Institute. Christine Rogers focused in developing documentation, publication, and code development process for an open source neuroinformatics software. We also had quite a few public engagement related projects. One is called Biodiversity in Focus, led by Bruno Suarez and Nara Benon. 
to combat misinformation in Brazil around uh, biodiversity, and they got about 700 followers within a month. Lena, a community manager who you met in a previous slide, shared a heartfelt story of how her mother could uh, could not attend PhD defense but could actually watch her graduating for OLS, which was being live streamed. Another project was led by Cassandra, where she shared about open science from a perspective of uh, researchers in Global South, and most of uh, these researchers came from the first cohort. The post cohort feedback showed that since most of the program took place during the lockdown, not everybody could finish what they planned to accomplish. So there were only 30% who could actually accomplish all their goals. About 35-30% people could meet most of their goals. And uh, similarly, some people could do only partially what they planned to do in this program. Only one person had to deviate from their original goal, but they felt that they were very productive. One representative feedback was that even though not everything that they planned was over during the program, they learned enough so that they can continue developing their ideas. Most mentors also felt that they were very well matched with their mentees and appreciated the sense of community. Overall experience was rated quite positive with the lessons, uh, meaning what we taught uh, in, the, in the cohort call were mostly or always useful. Most of the mentor mentee calls as well, we received quite heartwarming feedback, such as their mentor took their journey as their own, uh, their mentor helped them learn how to become a mentor, they appreciated the culture of gratitude and understanding. Mentor also appreciated uh, what they gained from this program and suggested that we should offer more learning opportunities to them in the next cohort. Now, as a team, we have probably worked together only one week in the same place. We mostly work online and in the next few slides, I'll share how we work together. Since we all have our own job, we meet only once a week uh, where we share our plan and we divide work for the next of the rest of the week. Uh, we meet over Zoom call, we have our shared notes, we have Slack to uh, have real-time chat, we share all our documents through Google Drive and Keybase for the password for our accounts. Our participants, mentors, and experts also stay in touch with us uh, by communicating through Zoom calls. Uh, we also have shared documents for them. We're now moving from Google document to HackMD so we can synchronize them easily. We're also moving from Gator to Slack to allow threaded conversation. We have weekly information through mailing list and calendar. And we also have project tracking and update through website and GitHub. For public interaction, we have public mailing list and our repository is open. Uh, general updates are available on website and we often tweet out. I think what works for us as a team is kindness and supportive attitude towards each other. We trust in each other's uh, ability. We have confidence towards each other. We hold each other accountable and show up when someone else doesn't have a lot of time in certain week. Uh, we have we really show gratitude whenever we can. Our supportive network of friends who joined us as mentors and experts were huge support and they made us feel confident in what we were doing. We promote culture of collaboration over competition and finally we maintain transparent communication with the team and participants. So if we can put our program at this point in the so story circle that we showed for Joy and Sam, we will begin our journey with a dream to involve a wider community in developing this sustainable program, uh, evaluate where we stand and where we can go. We want to gain external funding and support for our members so that we can continue exchanging values and establish a fair reward system for them. All these while ensuring that we don't compromise with the quality of this program. Here are our plans for the second cohort of Open Life Science. It will take place from September to December. We're currently reviewing the applications for round two. And we're also offering project-specific mentorship alongside the Turing Way. So the Turing Way is an open data science project for which Movika is a community manager, where there are a few project leads already embedded in the organization and their med mentors will be recruited also from the Turing Way. We are also looking for funding for things like our tech stack, tooling, closed captioning for calls, and bursaries for teleconferencing equipment. We also plan to introduce a new module on verification and invest in making our platform more fair. 
With that, we'd like to thank our everyone who has supported us as mentors, experts, partners, and our employers. Thank you very much. <laughs>